What's up everyone, Jason Brown here, the king of programming. We're talking about five squats you're not doing, and we're gonna start right now. All right, guys, I wanna preface this video by saying, these are squats you're probably not doing. I am not gonna talk about squats you probably are doing today, like the back squat and front squat. I love those variations. But for today, we're gonna to get into some ones that might be low hanging fruit for you and maybe are variations that you wanna try in your programming. All right, guys, the first squat we're gonna start with today is the hamburger squat. People think that the hamburger squat and the goblet squat are two of the same, and they're not, okay? So the major difference is, the way that we're holding the kettlebell. A goblet squat, you probably know, is held like this, pretty close to the body, whereas a hamburger squat is held like you're eating a hamburger. Go figure, right? Now, the difference between this squat is, and the goblet squat, is loading capacity is going to be lower by virtue of how you're holding it. Now, by virtue of how you're holding it, it's gonna rely more on the anterior core to brace and get into good position. I like this one as more of a repatterning tool. So if you're looking at improving your squat, this is a great variation to do where we can really focus on rigidity in the bottom, getting good depth, keeping the anterior core engaged and not just going through the motions. Now, if you wanted to go with a goblet squat and you wanted to go for more loading, you could certainly do so, but I like this one as the regression to that movement, okay? So good variation for beginners. I also like it for people that are more advanced. If you do have heavier kettlebells and you could do sets 12 to 15 reps is usually how I use the hamburger squat. I, I grab my 106 uh, pound kettlebell and I do sets of 12 to 15 reps and I get a really great workout from that. So great variation to use in your programming and has a ton of application. All right guys, variation number two is the box squat. This is one that I've written about extensively. I think it's a great variation for a lot of people, but it's never perfect for everyone. There is no exercise that I'm ever gonna talk about that's gonna be perfect and span everyone. I would be lying if I said that was the case. It is not the case with all movements, but this is a great variation for a number of things. Number one, we can use it with heavier loads. Number two, we can use it to repattern the squat and teach someone how to get their hips back. A lot of times working with new clients over the years, I've seen them you know, really work on more knees and less of hips and not having good lumbar pelvic rhythm where they can get into good position. This is one where you have something like a box. We are forced to get our hips back to the box, okay? There's a few key components to this. One, we wanna make sure that we sit back on the box. When we do that, we are effectively breaking up the lowering and raising phase of the lift. Now, when we sit back on the box, that doesn't mean we're gonna relax and lose our positioning. We're gonna stay in a top position and maintain good lumbar extension and then come through the raising phase. So again, we sit back, explode up. Sit back, explode up. It's really that simple. You don't necessarily need to use a safety squat bar, but I love the safety squat bar for box squatting. You can do front box squat. You can use a regular barbell. You can certainly do other variations too, like Zercher squats, but again, has a ton of application. So let's talk about where you could potentially use this in your programming. You could do it for heavier efforts, one to five repetition max. You could do something like cluster sets. You could use wave loading. You could do it for dynamic effort where we're doing speed work, doing five sets of five with something like 40% of your max, and maybe you've got some additional chain weight on the bar. So it has a number of great benefits. Let's say you are getting back into training and your squat isn't feeling great, maybe you've already used the hamburger squat and you wanna to progress to a barbell movement, box squat, a great place to go. Um, you don't need to load it particularly heavy to get a lot from it and to teach you how to, again, get into good position with your squat, but also teach you how to explode out of the hole. Now, caveat to this. If you have lower back issues and going in to position on the box where you essentially go into more lumbar flexion, that can be problematic. So remember that when you do sit back on this box, we're not getting into a position where we could potentially have the spinal, uh, you know, lumbar spine being in a disadvantageous position. So that's something you wanna be mindful of. The other thing is, is that having a coach certainly helps someone to watch you, or maybe you video it from the side with just an empty bar and get some technique going first because there is 
certainly some coaching that needs to take place with this. Another thing to consider with this squat variation is that you can modify the stance. So if you wanted to bias more adductors and glutes, you could go with a wider stance. If you wanted to bias more quadriceps, you could certainly go with a closer stance. I love the wide stance variation, but as I said, it's not the end all, it's not a one size fits. So make sure that you know, you're mindful of all those things before potentially attempting this movement. All right, guys, our next squat variation. You're probably not gonna guess this one. Skater squat. This is an advanced movement. If you don't know how to squat, don't attempt this, okay? It's not a great place to start with your squat pattern. Go back to the beginning and start with the hamburger squat and then progress maybe to heavier loading with a goblet squat, so on and so forth. This is a harder variation, definitely for someone that has been in the trenches for a long time and has good balance, but also has some good strength. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna show you guys this, um, and then I'm gonna show you a regression to it so you can potentially start from a little bit easier position and then potentially work your way up to the skater squat. Now, you notice I'm using dumbbells, not as additional resistance, I'm using this as a counterbalance. So when I do my skater squat, I'm gonna do a front raise with my dumbbells to help counterbalance. And that's exactly it. I'm lowering to the air X pad and then standing up. Now, you don't necessarily need a pad, but this will certainly help. You could do it with no pad, but as you know, this is gonna be more range of motion, okay? If that is too hard, you can start on a box and do a single leg squat this way. This is a great place to start with. If you wanna get better at that, start with a low box or even uh, this is a 12 inch box. You could certainly go a little bit higher like a bench and it is hot here today and I'm winded from doing a few reps. But needless to say, when I'm dropping my microphone, skater squat is a phenomenal variation. This is one I program in my conjugate program all the time. People hate it, but they love it because it does have a tremendous amount of value as far as balance, single leg strength. And again, it usually humbles people quite a bit. Even guys that I know that are super strong, that are squatting five, 600 pounds, they try the skater, uh, skater squat and they're pretty humbled by how hard it is and their inability to execute it properly. So usually we have people start with a box and progress to this. But good news with this is that if you are strong, you can progress this pretty quickly and get good at it. I've seen people progress this to wearing weighted vests, even throwing some chains on, and you'd be surprised how strong people can get with this exercise. And does it transfer to your bilateral squat? Sometimes, not all the time, really depends on you, but it is a phenomenal tool and I would highly recommend giving it a try if you're ready for this one. All right, guys, if you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate having you here and subscribing to my content. If any of this information resonates with you and you want more free value, I would love the chance to support you on my weekly newsletter. We put out a ton of free content, myself and my wife, Danny, put this out. We write it every single week to curate a ton of great stuff for you guys. The link is in the show notes and we'll see you on the inside. Fourth variation, Zercher squat. This is a variation that I think is getting more popular. I see a lot more people posting about it on social media, which is pretty cool. But as everything, it's not a one size fits. It has tons of application. It's a great variation for a lot of people, but some people, maybe it's not a great fit for. Now, who is this not a great fit for? If you are a coach and you're writing programs for a client, maybe they're in their 50s or 60s and they just wanna look good and feel good and you have them do this movement. The question is, is, is the return on investment there? They might be hyper-focused on how it feels and how it looks more than the value they get from it, if that makes sense. So I think you should be strategic with how you use this variation. And if you're someone like me, I use the uh, Zercher variation actually pretty regularly in my own training. Um, I'll definitely have blocks of training where I do this you know, probably once every eight to 12 weeks, if you will. It's a great variation and has a number of benefits that a traditional squat does not have. Now, number one, this variation, believe it or not, has for most people, higher loading capacity than say a front squat. And the reason for that is, is positioning of the barbell. You get a lot more uh, dominance of the upper back complex as opposed to a front squat, which is obviously higher and in a front rack position. So there is some, some advantages in terms of just positioning and loading capacity. A lot of times with a front squat, people are limited by their front rack mobility. Now, even if you're using strats, there is still some limitations that exist there. With a Zercher squat, we can get rid of that. Now, you have to be able to get past the pain that you feel. I'm using an Elite FTS zigzag bar, which works really well. You could use a fat bar or you could use a straight bar with fat grips. Um, but you know what? It's one of those things that you get over pretty quickly. It's not that bad. Um, so again, if you're someone like me, this might be a variation you use. If you're in your 50s or 60s and maybe you just wanna do a hamburger squat, I get it. So anyways, uh, we're getting into position here and you know, even isometrically, I am 
putting my biceps in an isometric contraction. So you certainly get some value there. I wouldn't say that it's bicep training. It's definitely not. Um, but there is something to be said about that component of it. Now, we're bracing just by virtue of having the bar on us as a tactile cue. So there's certainly some reliance on the anterior core and certainly upper back complex because as we lower, what goes forward, our upper back. So there are things that just biomechanically that we need to consider. Now, depth for this is usually pretty good as far as you know being able to get good range of motion with this movement. Um, this is only light, lightweight, so obviously it's not uh, painful at all for me. But as we creep up and loading, that can certainly be a limiting factor. I love the Zercher squat, I program it, but my people that use my programs are like me. So I know that there's no issue with them doing this movement. And again, just gotta remember the context. Who is it for? What are their goals? And let that be the guiding light, whether or not you decide to choose this exercise. All right, guys, fifth and final squat variation. I would say this is probably gonna be another one that you're not thinking of, but this is a lateral squat done with the landmine. I love the landmine, it has a number of uses. I have separate videos on the landmine, just exclusively on different variations you can do with the landmine. I recommend checking that out. But for this, we're doing a lateral squat. Now, lateral squat, I see this being low hanging fruit, and I know some of you call me out for saying low hanging fruit. I love that phrase, low hanging fruit. I think frontal plane work for a lot of people is low hanging fruit because they're just not doing it. And most programs are just dominated by sagittal plane work. So this is a way to get outside of that. In addition to that, it is very user friendly by the way of the setup. So we're actually set up where the barbell is positioned in our alignment, uh, landmine. And know that if you don't have a landmine, you can still execute this. Put your barbell in the corner of your gym. Or they have a DIY like a tennis ball that you can put on the end of your barbell and use it in place. So you can make this work in a number of different ways. You don't necessarily need the landmine, but I think you can grab a landmine uh, pretty cheap. I'll actually drop one in the show notes. Um, that I recommend using. And it's, again, very inexpensive and well worth it because you can get a ton of application from just this one piece. So when we do this exercise, what I love about it too is that we're gonna be able to load this pretty heavy. Now, I have no weight on the barbell now just to demonstrate it for you guys, but you can load this up pretty heavy. I've loaded this up with four plates before. And it's funny, the limiting factor usually is more the grip than it is the leg strength, which is kind of a drawback of it, but you certainly could use um, a handle or something of that nature to make it a little bit more grip friendly, if you will. So when we do this, we're gonna get into a super wide position and we're gonna go side to side. So again, a lateral squat, keeping the chest up. You don't need to start heavy if you've never done it. So always start light, even just starting with a barbell, doing three sets of 20 total reps, so 10 each side great place to start. But over time, you stronger people out there, I think you'd be surprised how heavy you can load this. This is a phenomenal tool to use, a phenomenal exercise. And again, it's one of those things that's just the value of it is understated. It's not in a lot of programs. This is one that you can get a lot from, especially if you're looking to stay healthy long-term and have great mobility, but also be strong. This is a great exercise to use, and I would highly recommend checking it out. That is it for today, guys. We just went through five exercises for the squat pattern, not just squats. We did some single leg work in there, as you can remember with the landmine lateral squat, as well as our skater squat. So a lot of different things that we can potentially lean on, but know that at the end of the day, the individual is the guiding light. What works for them? There's no one size fits all with any of these exercises. So these are all recommendations, but at the end of the day, you need to get in the trenches and experiment with this up to find out what works for you and then you'll be able to be in the best possible position because remember guys, results are king.